Hello and welcome to our today's lesson. In this lesson, we are going to work on the last part of unit 12, which is about data. And this part is aimed, and this part is aimed to check students' understanding or students' progress in this unit. So the first question of this part says, these are the insects found in one hour in a garden. So we have types of insects and the frequency, how many times they are found. We have beetle, which is found 20 times. We have butterfly, which is found five times. Ladybird, three times. Moth, two times. And wasp, 10 times. So part A of this question says, draw a waffle diagram to represent the number of different insects found in the garden. So to draw a waffle diagram, we have to first make a key for each type of the insect. For example, for the beetle, I use red. So, so I use red for the beetle. I will write beetle over here, beetle. And for butterfly, I will use orange. So orange for butterfly, butterfly. For ladybird, I will use, let me use green. So for ladybird, I use green. Okay, these are called the keys. So let me write over here, key. So ladybird, okay, ladybird. And for moth, I will use black. Let me use black for moth, okay. This is mod. So how many do we have? One, two, three, four. And there's another one which is left and it is wasp. So for wasp, I use blue. Let me use dark blue for that. So I use dark blue for wasp. For wasp. And then we have to find out how many insects are there altogether so that we should make the waffle diagram. So we have 20 beetle plus 5, 25, plus 3, 28, plus 2 is 30, and plus another 10. It is 40 insects. So to make the waffle diagram, we need a grid, which can be either 5 by 8 or 8 by 5. I'll make 8 by 5 out here. So I can draw it nicely. 1. Okay. Now we have 5 rows here and we should have eight columns. So, four and four here, which is eight. I will start with the beetle. The color I chose for the beetle is red. So let me start from the left side. How many do we have to color? We have to color 20 squares. So one, two, three, four, five. 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, and 20. So 20 of the insects are beetle. And there are another five butterfly. What was the color for the butterfly? It is orange. So I will shade five of the parts orange. Two, three, four, and five. So five are colored orange. So how many ladybirds do we have? We have three ladybirds and two moths. I want to put them on one side so that our waffle diagram look nice and easily understood. So the, for ladybird, I choose green. So I put ladybirds here on the right side. One, two, and three. And we have two moths. So for moth, I choose black. Let me shade this one black. Okay. One and two. So what is left? So the last one is wasp, which is left. So I chose dark blue for wasp. Let me shade 10 of the grid parts. Dark blue. Okay, five and another five in this row, in this column, sorry. Okay, now we have shaded all parts of the waffle diagram. 
in which we have 40 insects from which 20 of them are beetle, five butterfly, three ladybirds, and two moth and 10 wasp. Part B says, what percentage of the insects found were beetles? So the total number of the insects we have are 40 and 20 of them are beetle. So 20 is 50% of the 40. So the percentage of beetle in this waffle diagram is 50%. It is 50%. Well, we are done with question number one. So let's now move to question number two. Let me scroll a bit. Question two says, the length of children's thumbs were measured in class A and class B. These dot plots show the result. So we have dot plot for class A and dot plot for class B, where on the Y axis we have frequency or number of children, and on the X axis we have length of thumb in centimeters. The same is with class B, we have the frequency or the number of children on the Y axis and the length of thumb in centimeters on the X axis. We have four follow-up questions. Question A says, describe the pattern and dot plot for class A. And dot plot for class A. So the pattern is in a way that it first increases and then decreases. Or we can say, let me write the answer for A. A. For class A, for class A, the pattern, the pattern goes up, goes up, and then, and then comes down, and then comes down. This is the pattern for class A, and for class B, which is part B. It says describe the pattern and the dot plot for class B. So for part B, I will write here also. There is no students in class B that's having the thumb of three centimeters. So it's starting from three, it is zero, then it goes up, it goes up, then again, it comes down. Here also we can say that the frequency, the frequency, let me write in a different way this one. The frequency increases, increases, and then, and then decreases. Increases and then decreases. Here, both of these statements mean the same thing. But for A, I have written, for class A, the pattern goes up and then comes down. But in part B, I said the frequency. Frequency is the number of children the number of children, which increases, and it means goes up, and then decreases, and comes down. We see in the dot plot, which is obvious over there. So let's move to part C. In part C, it says, describe the difference in length of thumbs for the children in class A and also in class B. So there is not any difference in both classes. We can write, let me write C here, in both in both classes, in both classes, the frequency, in both classes, the frequency increases and then increases and then decreases and then decreases. In both, we have seen that in class A also, it's starting from uh, five students which are having three centimeter thumbs or having the thumbs of three centimeter, then it goes up where we have seven students who are having the thumb of four centimeter and then it comes down. The same way for class B, there is not any student who is having the thumb of three centimeter, but there are, f but there are three students who are having the thumb of four centimeter, then the number goes up and then again comes down. This is the pattern in both class A and class B. So part D of this question, let me scroll down a bit. Okay. For part D, it says, what might explain the difference between the length of thumbs in class A and in class B? We can say that the students, the students in class A are 
younger, the students in class A are younger than the students, than the students in class, than the students in class B. This is what the diagram or the graph or the dot plot is showing us about the class A and class B. Well, we are done with question two as well. Let me scroll down to move to question number three. In question three, it says, this is a table of mass of parcels loaded into a van. Mass of parcels loaded into a van, where we have zero to less than two, and we have two to less than four, and four to less than six, and six to less than eight, and eight to less than 10. These are showing the intervals, the intervals. Now it's asking us to draw a frequency diagram. Frequency diagram is called histogram also. And we are using intervals in the frequency diagram. So here it says, draw a frequency diagram showing the mass of parcels, showing the mass of parcels. Let me draw the diagram here. So we have the x axis, the y axis and the x axis. So on the y axis, I will put frequency. I will put frequency and on the x axis, I will put mass of parcel. Mass of parcel. Okay, mass of parcel uh, in what? Okay, it's kg in kilograms. Mass of parcels in kilograms. We have the mass of zero to less than two, zero to less than two, and two to less than four, four to less than six, six to less than eight, and eight to less than 10, eight to less than 10. So because the biggest number here is seven, I will use the scale of 10. So the interval here will be each one, two. So zero, two, four, six, eight, and 10. Here, this point is showing eight. Well, so mass of the how many parcels weight zero to two mass of seven parcels weight zero to two. So the number between six and eight is seven. So this is, this is the bar for the mass of zero to two kilograms. And how many parcels weight between two to less than four? There are five. So five is between four and six. I will draw it here. So five, so five parcels weight two to less than four. How many parcels four to less than six? There are four. So four is here, four parcels weight four to less than six. And there is not any parcel that weight six to less than eight. So it's zero. It is zero over here. And how many parcels weight eight to less than 10? There are two only. So this is showing two. This is the frequency diagram that I could draw using the information in the table over here. Well, we are done with question three. Let me scroll down to move to question number four. In question four, we have a line graph. It says, this graph shows the height of a candle as it burns. The height of a candle as it burns. Now, on the vertical axis or on the y axis, we have height of the candle in centimeter. Height of the candle in centimeter. But on the horizontal or on the x axis, we have the hours. We have the hours. So let's read the follow-up questions. Let me scroll a bit down. Okay. Part A says, how tall was the candle when it was first lit? How tall was it? So we can find it on the y-axis. This is the y-axis and this one is the x-axis. When we are looking for the hours, we have to look on the x-axis. And when we are looking for the height of the candle, we have to look on the y-axis. So now that we are looking for the height, we have to see how tall it was. It was 18, it was 18 centimeters. So I can write when it was first lit, it was 18 centimeters. Well, part B says, how many centimeters of the candle burned in the first hour? This is the first hour. This is the first hour. We have to see how many centimeters. Okay, it is now on 10. We have to go up from 10. Okay, two, four, six, eight. Eight centimeters. 
eight centimeters of the candle burned in the first hour. Well, in part C it says, use the line graph to estimate the height of the candle after two hours. Height of the candle after two hours. So when we are looking for the height, we have to consider two hours. We have to consider two hours. Well, as it shows over here, it is not four, not six. It is about five or 5.5. 5. We can say 5.5 5 centimeters. 5.5 5, or maybe it is five. But because it's estimation, we can either say five or we can say 5.5. 5. Because estimation is not exact answer. So it can be somehow below or above the actual answer. Well, part D says, how long does the candle take to burn down from 18 centimeter to four centimeter? From 18 to four. So four is here. How long does it take? Let us find out on the horizontal axis over here. So here it's two hours and here is two and a half hour. Two and a half hours. So it takes the candle to burn from 18 to two, sorry, from 18 to four centimeter, two and a half hours, two and a half hours. Well, this is all about the last part of unit 12, which is about data. I hope it helps you learn how to interpret dot plot, line graph, and other types of the graphs like waffle diagram, or maybe bar chart, but we don't have the bar chart over here. And please make sure to subscribe to my channel and like the video and share the video with your friends, your classmates, and if you're a teacher with your students as well. And please don't forget to give any comments if you have any questions under the same video. Have a nice time and thank you so much.